Hello everyone, this is Rose. Today's topic from the Book of Life is Henry the Mucha. My male friend think that I am Motel 6, the grocery store, his chaperone, his maid, and a short order cook. Do I look like your mama? What the F? Let's take a look at this short story from the Book of Life. Cherie is having a conversation with her mother. Cherise, I understand your need to explore the world now that you are 18. I just don't think the military is the way to be adventurous in the world, especially when troops are still being deployed to battle in other countries. Can you give college one more try? You just might enjoy it this time. Entering college at the age of 17, immediately after graduating high school, early may have been too soon for you. Mom, says Sir Cherise, college is not for me at this time in my life. It doesn't mean I would never consider going in the future. Besides, like I told you previously, I prayed about me joining the military. I am at peace with going. My spirit is at peace. Okay, mom? Okay, Cherise. I have always taught you to pray before making major decisions in life and to listen to the voice of God as you spend time in his presence doing meditation. I now have to trust in what you receive. You have my blessings. Thanks, Mom. That means a lot to me. Cherise is Helen's oldest daughter. She has always been a smart student with high energy. Throughout her years in school, Cherise's teachers would constantly complain to her parents that she needs to learn how to use her idle time more productively. Cherise would finish in her classwork. She would finish in class what she needed to do she would complete her assignments before the time was up. And then she would spend the rest of her idle time talking to other students as they tried to work. In spite of her parents and the teachers encouraging Cherise to read in silence when she finished her work before the other students, she continued continue to disturb the other classmates. To Cherie, school was boring. She always talked about doing adventurous things like skydiving or rock climbing. But Helen, her mom, all she can do is just shake her head. She was standing one day in the kitchen reminiscing on Cherie's childhood. She understands why her daughter chose to join the military. Without doubt, Helen knew that the military would provide the adventure her daughter so desperately seeks. Her prayer is that Cherie's find a sense of balance with the strict discipline required from soldiers in the military. She knew that if no other course would give her the discipline she need, military would. Helen didn't know what else to do. So she just accept, respect her daughter's wishes and pray for the best. Cherise enlisted in the army. Within two weeks after enlisting, she was sent to the base in North Carolina. Cherise would call home weekly to update her mom on life in the Army. 
One year after enlisting, Helen, her mother, worst nightmare, came to reality. Sharice received deployment orders. She was scheduled to deploy to Afghanistan after the year-end holidays. Helen was happy that her daughter had at least the holidays to spend with her and the family before being deployed to Afghanistan. So Cherie spent Christmas and New Year's at home and upon returning to the base in North Carolina, she was prepped for deployment. During Cherie's one year assignment in Afghanistan, she often talked about her friend Henry. So Cherise would call home and Henry was always in the conversation with her mom. Henry and Cherise reported to the same commanding officer. She talked about, Cherise talked about how Henry was so patient with her. He would just sit and listen to her as she expressed her concerns or when she simply wanted to reminisce about family life in the U.S. Henry would sometimes join in the conversation and not just listen, and he would share his upbringing with Sharice. But for the most part, he would sit in silence and listen to her talk. It was as though it was bringing him a sense of calmness. After all, they were somewhere where they heard a lot of explosions, dropping the bombs around them. They seemed to bring each other a sense of calmness and peace. His patience provided Cherise with a peace of mind that she really did need it. Henry and Cherise's assignment in Afghanistan ended at the same time. Back in North Carolina, the two hardly spent time with each other. It was back to norm as they knew it prior to deployment. They would greet each other in person whenever their paths cross, as well as like each other postings on Facebook. After six years of service, Sharice decided not to re-enlist. It was time to go home and learn how to navigate in life as a civilian. Two years after returning home, Cherise had found her path in life. She had her own apartment. She was working. And she was settled in into her new way of living. When suddenly she receives a DM from Hendry on Facebook. He informed Sharice of his decision to not re-enlist after serving eight years. He told Sharice that two of his siblings moved to the same state where she lives, but he will remain in North Carolina once he out of the service, he was not re-enlisting, he will remain in North Carolina to help his brother who is a single father. So he was moving in with his brother. After the DM, Henry would often call Sharice to talk to her on the phone. I guess he was out of the service now. So post, posting things on Facebook and clicking like was not enough anymore. So they were now talking on the phone quite a bit. Henry was calling Sharice quite a bit once he got out the service and was now living with his brother. So he would ask about the distance. He was very inquisitive about where she lived and the distance between where she lives from where his brother who lived in the same state as her lived. He was very inquisitive. He wanted to know all about the city life where she lived. 
and he would call often, just wanting to ask her about the tourist spots and what did they do, where was, how far away was the beach, what did she do for entertainment, just as though a person who's inquisitive about wanting to live near, you know, move to the state himself, that he wanted to know a lot about it. So Cerise gave him answer all his questions, but she was also curious as to why do he keep calling me to ask me about the state I live in when his brother lives in the same state, just a city over from where I live. But even though that was in her mind, she did not want to hurt his feelings by asking him what was going on. Why didn't he ask his brothers these questions? Or if he asked these, his brother these questions, she just answered his questions. But she knew something was coming. She just wasn't sure what it was. But she knew something was behind the line of questions. So when he wanted to inquire about the distance between where his brother lived, Cherise informed him well, your brother live a city over from where I live, and it's approximately a two-hour drive on the weekend without traffic. During the weekday, the route is known for heavy traffic. Therefore, it would be approximately a four-hour drive. So, Henry understood. He no longer called her and inquired about the city anymore. So Cerise was surprised when she ended up receiving a call from him three weeks later stating that he was at the airport. This was on a Thursday afternoon. She gets a call saying, hey Cerise, this is uh, Henry. Guess what? I'm in your city. I'm at the airport. Sharice was like, what? Okay. Then he says, I'm calling you to ask you if you can pick me up from the airport and transfer me, transport me to my brother's house. Sharice asked him, wait a minute. Which airport are you at? After hearing Henry reply, she asked him, why would you fly into an airport near my house when your brother lives two hours away from where I live? Henry responds was, my brother is usually tired after work and would not have the energy to pick me up from the airport. So Cherise didn't say what she was thinking, but she was upset with Henry for his lack in consideration of her time. She thought to herself as she went to pick up Henry from the airport, what if I did not answer the phone or was not available? What would he have done for transportation to his brother house? After picking up Henry, it took them four and a half hours in traffic to arrive at Henry's brother's house. It took Sharice two and a half hours in her return back to her house after dropping Henry off. During the ride back home, Sharice make a mental note to tell Henry next time he flies to into town to make sure he fly into an airport closer to his brother home, then take the shuttle bus or Uber to his brother house. Cherise began to think out loud. She was so upset. I can't believe I have been on the road for seven hours. I am exhausted. Good thing was, Cherise didn't hear from Henry for another six months. So, but when she did hear from him, she was one evening, she was relaxing, watching TV. She receives a call. Looking at the caller ID, she thinks to herself, Henry better not be calling me 
for long distance transportation again. She picks up the call. Henry shout through the phone. Hey, baby girl, what's up? Sharice, hi, Henry. What's up with you? All is well on my end. Well, I'm back in town. This time, I'm not at the airport. I'm here at my brother's house. I have been here for a week. Sharice was happy. <laughs> he, Henry says, I will be in town for another week or so before heading back to North Carolina. I was wondering if we could just hang out. Henry, Sharice was so happy that Henry was not calling her to chauffeur him from the airport to his her brother's house. She was so happy. She said, sure, buddy. Sure, we can hang out. Henry, I don't mind. However, I do not want. She told him, I don't mind us hanging out. But however, I do not want to make that drive back to your brother's house to bring you to my house to hang out. See, she read his mind. She knew him and she spoke it before he had a chance to say anything because the next thing that comes out of his mouth is, well, do you know of any transportation that can take me from my brother house to yours? So she tells him, why don't you rent a car? Check online for discount car rentals near your brother house that would allow you to drop off your car at the airport when you get ready to fly back out to North Carolina. This way you do not have to arrange for transportation to the airport when you return home. So she giving him some big hints, letting him know, I'm not taking you nowhere. Good idea, Sharice. I will come over tomorrow around noon. Sounds good, Henry. See you tomorrow. Sharice was so glad she did not have to chauffeur Henry around town. The next day, Sharice gets up early to prepare her place for company. She decided to order wings from her favorite fast food restaurant to go with the pasta salad she had made the night before. Uh, suddenly, she heard the intercom buzz around 1.15 p.m. Hello, shouts Sharice through the intercom. Hey, baby girl, it's me, Henry. I'm downstairs. So Sharice buzzed him in after telling him her apartment number. To her surprise, he has a little boy with him. She opened the door and Henry is standing there with this little boy. Henry greets Sharice with a hug. He was carrying a large army tote bag, like the ones they use in the military as luggage when they travel. She was so taken back by the child with him, she didn't think to ask why was he bringing luggage with him. Cherise turns to the child and say, Hi, my name is Cherise. What is your name? My name is Henry Jr. Everyone calls me Junior. Sharice look at Henry Strange. How old are you, Junior? He says, I am 10. Henry tells Sharice he will explain later. After they ate lunch, Sharice allows, allows Junior to play her video games in her bedroom. She say, you can play in there on the big TV in there while I talk to your dad in the living room. According to Henry, Junior mother was a one night stand before going into the service. He did not know he was a father until he was contacted three months ago from child services. The mother was arrested. Oh. She was sentenced to 10 years. What the heck did she do? She had no living family members to take Junior. 
Because Henry wasn't sure if he was the father, Children's Services arranged for a paternity test. It came back positive. You are the father. Now that Henry is a single father, just like his brother in North Carolina, you would think it would be okay. But his siblings, siblings feels that he should attain housing for him and his child rather than go from couch to couch at his siblings' houses. Henry asks if he can stay with Cherise for a couple of weeks until he figured things out. Cherise Skull shakes her head and think in silence, he got me again. Cherise lived in a one bedroom apartment because of the child, she just she allowed Henry and her son Junior, his son Junior, to sleep on her sectional couch. Henry was putting in grocery orders without compensating her for her expenses. After two weeks, she asked Henry about his plans. He did not have any. She explained to him that she could not continue to take care of him and his son. She told him that he needs to apply for public assistance in his hometown town, and he needed to apply for housing assistance for single parents. Henry was unaware that this was something he could do. Cherise helped Henry with the online applications for public assistance. Also, she assisted him with booking his flight back to North Carolina. Henry brother in North Carolina agreed to allow his Henry and his son to stay with him until his public assistance finds him a low income place. He felt like well since Henry was on the route to doing something positive for him and his son to having their own, okay, I can deal with him for a little bit longer in my home. So his brother took him back in. After Henry and his son leaves, Cherise thinks out loud, I am rethinking if I want to get married and have kids. I enjoy their company, especially Henry Jr. But I am so happy they are gone. I was so tired of cleaning up piss from around my toilet, as well as picking up their clothes, washing their clothes, cooking every day, and being Henry Sr. business assistants, or should I say, doing his business for him. He act like he did not know how to read and fill out the public assistance application online. Is this how it is being married? A woman has to do everything for the man? Cherise didn't know what else to say or think. Cherise felt all must be well with Henry. After a year of not hearing from him, she was so happy she just did not even want to call him. She figured if she didn't hear from him, all had to be well. When suddenly she gets a call. She looks at the call ID then shouts, Damn, I just jinked myself. Why did I have to think about that man? What do he want from me now? Cherise tried to push the red button on her cell phone so the call can go to voicemail when she accidentally pushed the green button. She shouted, oh shit. Then she hears this word, hello, hello, coming through the phone. She picks, she just says, hey, what's up, Henry? She now has to reply and talk to him. Hello, replies Henry. Hey, baby girl. What's up? How are you doing? What you been up to? Hi, Henry. I was getting ready to run out to take care of some business. Can you call me back at a later time? Well, I won't be long. Just just give me a couple of minutes. Just hold on, baby girl. I just got to need a couple of minutes of your time. And then I'll let you go run your business. Go handle your business. 
Then he says, I am in town with my girl. And I want to take her around sightseeing. I was wondering if you can take us around to different tourist locations. I have a list. As well as, can you take us to a couple of, of nice restaurants while we are in town? Sharice was like, I am too through with this man. Who do he think I am? She says, sorry, Henry. Google Maps is the best tourist guide. And I know it is always available. I suggest you get a cell phone charger for the car and allow it to navigate the way. You and your girl have a wonderful time sightseeing. As stated, I was running out to take care of some business. Bye. She hangs up on him. After she hangs up, Sharice blocked Hendry's phone number. She wasn't going to give him a chance to say bye. She hung up. She said bye and boop. She hung up the phone. This is it. That was the last straw for Sharice. She blocked his number. Click the thumbs up and the subscribe button to receive notifications of more articles from the Book of Life. Be blessed. Be safe. Peace.